Can you really live in Thailand on $750 a month once you've got yourself settled in? Yeah, of course you can, but you may not be having the most exciting life. It would definitely have a different feel to your fortnight holiday that time you visited Phuket for the first time. There is good news though. If you can get your expenses down to around $750 a month and you're getting the standard weekly UK pension of £204, currently $1,127 a month, then you'd have over $4,500 a year spare for the essentials that make for a fun life. Whether this be a yearly flight home, regular good food, local trips to see what Thailand has to offer, or even short trips to places you've always dreamed of going to, such as Japan and Bali. Or maybe you prefer to spend the $370 on looking after your girlfriend, or hanging out with your mates in the local bars. Whatever floats your boat. So back to the point. How do you live on a monthly budget of $750 in Thailand? After all, that's just 26,500 Thai baht. To put it simply, you need to plan things out very carefully and have good control over your expenses. Perhaps partaking in the Japanese art of Kaikaibo. That is to have a physical household financial ledger. This could prove of use for keeping track of your money if you are one of those who don't know where the pennies have disappeared to. For this video, I'm not going to discuss home setup content costs that you need to cover when first moving to Thailand, as everybody is different. I'm just going to concentrate on the core living costs once you are here. It's easy to get an apartment for about six to 10,000 Thai baht, either through an agent or using Facebook Marketplace. To do a house search, first change the location and do a search for rentals. If you plan to use them, then be sure to get a place that has a gym and pool, as this can save a bit of money. Here's my place in Jomtien. It cost me 7,500 baht per month. It's about 212 US dollars. It has three pools and a gym. I feel that to keep expenses down you need hobbies. I personally enjoy retro gaming and am learning to play the guitar. I also enjoy going for a stroll along the beach, cooking, cycling and chilling out with my friends at the cinema. For hobbies such as these, once you have the equipment such as a musical instrument, a camera or a laptop computer, then the cost of these hobbies are next to nothing. So I've got my apartment, exercise facilities and hobbies covered for 7,500 Thai baht. My next major expense is utilities, namely water and electricity. These cost me from 700 to 1500 per month, depending on the season. Let's be safe and call it an average of 1300 Thai baht a month, about $37. I have a mobile phone plan from AIS. This cost me 200 Thai baht per month for unlimited data at about 10 meg download speed. I also have a 3 BB 1 gig down internet connection for 649 Thai baht a month. This also includes a subscription to HBO. Further to this, I have a yearly subscription to Disney Plus via AIS for 500 Thai baht per year, so about 40 Thai baht per month. I have a Honda scooter and put about 250 Thai baht of petrol a month into it. This is good for about 300 kilometers. Add another 2,000 baht a year for servicing and I'm looking at about 420 Thai baht a month for the bike. Here are my main non-food living expenses. 7,500 for the apartment, 1,300 for utilities, 400 to run the bike, 650 baht for 3BB internet and HBO, 200 for AIS mobile, and a further 40 baht for Disney Plus. This comes to about 10,100 Thai baht, or about $286 per month. So for my $750 allowance, that's 26,500 Thai baht, I am left with about 16,400 Thai baht, or $463. If I take 1,200 Thai baht out of this for monthly goods, such as shampoo, cleaning products, spices and the like, and a further 200 baht a month to cover my yearly visa extension, then I am left 15,000 Thai baht, or 500 Thai baht a day to live on. Let's move on to daily living expenses. In most countries, an easy method to keep costs down is to cook for yourself. This is not necessarily true in Thailand and it is often much cheaper to eat out than it is to cook for yourself. I usually start the day having a stroll along the beach promenade and I'll grab a coffee at a cafe for about 40 to 50 Thai baht. 
Next up is a bit of food. Personally, I like to cook my own breakfast. Here are a few typical dishes and their costs. This leaves a good 400 Thai baht for the remainder of the day. As I mentioned, it is cheap to eat out. So if I go to a local food court or restaurant and eat Thai food such as duck noodle soup, padang curry, chicken cashew nuts and the like, then it's usually about 60 to 70 baht per meal. And if I'm in the mood for non-Thai food, then I generally cook it myself, making use of the cheap prices of fruit and vegetables. I guess I'm looking at about 250 Thai baht a day for my three main meals and morning coffee. Adding a further 100 baht or so for some snacks, soda and an ice cream and the like from 7-Eleven, and I have spent about 350 Thai baht for the day. So I have 150 Thai baht spare. I do like a drink or two, but not every day. So let's go back to looking at things on a monthly basis. 150 Thai baht spare a day is about 4,500 baht a month. This is good for a few nights out having a beer, eating out at a local nicer restaurant every now and again, and a bit of shopping from Lazada and Uniqlo. Let's go. Living in Thailand on $750 a month, totally doable. Probably not the most exciting life, but better than struggling to pay the bills as you try to make your pension or salary last a little longer during these tough times. But let's be honest, if you had $1,000 a month to spend, it'd be much more fun. Ah, hang on. As I mentioned at the start of this video, if you are getting the standard British pension, then you'll be getting over $1,000 a month to live on. In fact, if you can keep your main Thailand monthly expenses down to $750, then you should have about $370 a month spare, or about $4,500 a year, to do all the activities that make life fun. The same hangs true for the digital nomads out there. If you can save up about $10,000, then you should have a good 12 months of runway cash allowing you to base yourself in Chiang Mai and get your online business started. Although it's more than possible to live a pleasant life in Thailand for $750 a month, and believe me, you can live a very good life if you have more than $1,500 a month to spend, I think that it is important to consider that the costs mentioned in this video are based on you being settled into your new home in Thailand. When you first move to Thailand to live long term, you will most likely need to make many one-off payments, especially if you are moving into a non-furnished apartment or bungalow. Even in a furnished home, you need to do an initial stock up at the supermarket, but odds and ends such as air fryers, small ovens and tables, maybe you'll even need a printer for your home office, and these all add up. Regardless of home costs, I personally splashed out over 100,000 Thai baht on a Honda scooter and more than 30,000 Thai baht on my two main hobbies of playing the guitar and videography. It is important to keep these initial startup costs in mind when trying to decide if you can really afford to live long term in Thailand. I don't recommend coming over here if you don't have a bit of backup cash to at least cover an emergency trip home and to cover potential medical expenses. Though accident insurance can be had very cheaply here, I am not going to delve into the topic of health insurance at the moment, as it is a whole topic in itself. I hope that you find these kinds of videos useful. If so, then likes and subscribes are very much appreciated.